You are tuned in to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out, and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Greetings, and welcome to a Fireside Chat. I'm your host, Lance White. Before I introduce tonight's guest, I am asking for your financial support to keep my show on the air until 2013. My book, Tales of a Zany Mystic, is now available for purchase in paperback or on Kindle at Amazon Books. You can make a donation in any amount or sponsor one week's show for $50. If you're a regular listener who uses Kindle, Please support my work by purchasing Tales of a Zany Mystic for $2.99 at Amazon Books. To find out more about donations, sponsorship, or getting a signed copy, write me directly at zanymystic59 at yahoo.com. Thank you. Tonight, my guest is Alfred Lambermont Weber. Alfred is a futurist whose book, Exopolitics, Politics, Government, and the Law in, Uni- Law in the Universe, founded the science of intelligent civilizations in the multiverse and expresses a positive timeline for Earth. Alfred's 1974 book, The Age of Cataclysm, integrates Earth sciences and the psychic remote viewing of Edgar Cayce of a global coastal event and expresses the catastrophic timeline for Earth. He is also the chairman of the Mars Anomaly Research Society, educating about life on Mars. A graduate of Yale University, Yale Law School, and a Fulbright Fulbright Scholar, Alfred has taught economics at Yale University and constitutional law at the University of Texas. He was general counsel to the New York City Environmental Protection Administration, a futurist at Stanford Research Institute, and is a judge on the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal. I just caught up with Alfred at the recent UFO conference in Santa Clara, so let's welcome him to the show now. Hi, Alfred. How are you? Great, great. You know, really, uh, just just fine, thank you. <laughs> good, good. Well, you do so much wonderful work in uh, uh, contacting people who have information that is not at all uh, readily available to the public. Uh, It's not available on the uh, mainstream, underground, or even within the New Age groups. You really kind of stand as an island in that sense uh, with exopolitics and the the interviews that you do on the radio. Um, Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I was thinking since we're so close to the end of 2012 and we have elections here in the United States, I thought I'd... uh, First of all, check with you to see what you feel is the most important topic that we should be aware of from all the research that you do and the people that you talk to uh, on your show. Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) That's a tall order. You you, you know, know. it's it's, it's funny because I've been uh, uh, speaking over the last uh, 24 to 48 hours as you can imagine about the the impacts of uh, what appears to be a an, envir- an environmental war, harp created um, false flag uh, attack, namely Hurricane Sandy, mm-hmm. and what its impact on the 2012 e- elections uh. would 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 be so i i i say well what is um um what, what's a good topic to speak about with zany mystic on a fireside chat <laughs> and and i'm here looking at a an article that's uh really kind of caught my eye okay. because it's it's part of a book that i'm that i'm gotten through a first draft of Called dimensions, the ecology of the multiverse, Ooh. and and the 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 headline of this article says, 
near-death experiences occur when soul leaves nervous system. And then it goes on. A near-death experience occurs when quantum substances, which form the soul, leave the nervous system and enter the universe at large, according to a groundbreaking theory proposed by two eminent scientists. According to this idea, consciousness is a program for a quantum computer in the brain, which can persist in the universe even after death, explaining the perception of those who have near-death experiences. Dr. Stuart Hameroff, Professor Emeritus for the Department of Anesthesiology and Psychology and Director of the Consciousness Center for Consciousness Studies at the University of Arizona, has advanced the quasi religious theory. It is based on a quantum theory of consciousness he and British physicist Sir Roger Penrose have developed that holds that the essence of our soul is contained inside structures called microtubules within brain cells. They have argued that our experience of consciousness is the result of quantum gravity effects within these microtubules, a theory they have dubbed orchestrated objective reduction, Um, and thus it is held that our souls are more than the interaction of neurons in the brain. Mm -hmm. Uh, They are, in fact, constructed from the very fabric of the universe and may have existed since the beginning of time. Uh, So the article goes on, uh, uh, and... I said, wow, that's, that's, that's really something that I'd like to talk to or talk uh-huh. with, um, say any mystic about. We, we can talk about the selection. I like to talk about it. Uh, uh-huh. and, and, uh, uh, it's, it, you know, it's kind of, uh, Sturm und Drang, thunder and lightning, and and it's pretty depressing stuff in yes. in yeah. in my judgment. Yeah, I think you're right, and and I've been finding that to be particularly true the last uh, oh, let's say the last few days to the last few weeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just gotten to the point where I can't even take in the information. Uh, it's just too. Uh, it's too much. It's too much. Um, and uh, it's interesting you would start with this because one of my favorite guests that I've had on a number of times is uh, the near-death researcher, PMH Atwater. Uh-huh. Uh, 80, I think she's 82 now. She's coming out with her 12th book. Oh, my and Lord. She has had three uh, near-death experiences and has interviewed over 2,000 people personally and two, over 200 to 300 indigos and crystals and the rest of it. She's coming out with her new book, uh, which has to do with the uh, the fifth race or the sixth race. I can't remember which. And um, she is a firm believer that, uh, you know, uh, consciousness uh, mirrors society and that we are approaching an, an, an extinction-level event or an event that indicates that we are going to uh, be perhaps compressed through heat, uh, not necessarily physical heat, but through the heat of friction, which creates the uh, momentum to compress the coal and become the diamond. So that's kind of a common esoteric theme in a lot of uh, Sufi and ancient esoteric traditions, that there is a process of, of densification and that there's a moment when uh, consciousness is, is suspended in a colloidal state. And I thought that was absolutely fantastic that uh, prior to a near-death experience, and we could be having one here on the planet uh, uh, together, because there's so many ways that this can, uh, that it's coming about uh, through all the ways that you said. Uh, the, you can, we can go on a laundry list, and that would take out the whole hour. Right. But, you know, um, we're we're in this now, and it seems that it's forcing people, myself included, to just stop. <laughs> and this this stoppage of you know this external force is like uh, the reverse Merkaba, where it literally stops, and your consciousness expands outside the body. So. Um, 
it's conceivable that that's the kind of event that we're preparing for, that uh, all of this seeming unconsciousness and the negativity and, and uh, evil, if you want to call it that, uh, which is going on in the world, is preparation for some kind of massive uh, global consciousness event. Right, right. And, and, and that's very much in sort of in the mainstream of the mainstream of the mainstream of the 2012 uh, uh, literature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, right. uh, you know, if you read if you read people like David Wilcock mm-hmm. uh, uh, and and they and they talk about a near a collective near death experience uh that 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 that, that uh would be one way of describing the biology and psychology and physics even quantum physics of quote the the ascension process right right uh and and i uh and that that is a is an area that i've always found great joy in speaking about um i that that was very much a a um a line of uh a line of presentation that i first gave at the Barcelona Exopolitics Conference in 2009 and then again at the Awaken Aware Conference in Los Angeles in 2010 mm. and uh and uh, then uh I my, my own thinking kind of evolved and I actually sat down and wrote a book be, be, uh which emerged out of a request by uh Oxford University Press, which is a division of Oxford University. Yes, yes. And they they wrote me and asked me if I w- was interested in writing a book on uh, the uh, on on extraterrestrial law. Oh, nice. Uh, and and so I said sure, and I and and, and so I sat down and I, and I said, wow, this is a real challenge, <laughs> be, be, because when I sat down, I realized that uh, there's no satisfactory typology of extraterrestrial civilizations or mm-hmm. or of intelligent civilizations in the multiverse. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there are different ones out there. There's one, um, uh, the 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 Kardashev scale, which I think Dr. Michio Kaku has made popular, and that's you know you have zero level civilizations and mm-hmm. one level, two level, three level, and the three levels can make their own galaxy. The one levels. Uh, are advanced enough that they live off of the energy of the solar system and kind of what's in interstitial space. Mm -hmm. And many civilizations who are at a zero level, which is our level, Mm -hmm. at least at the public sphere, uh, uh, self-destruct before they advance to zero. And we're kind of at that point. Mm -hmm. Will we self-destruct before we get to a level one. Uh, and so there's that. But I realized then in writing this book about extraterrestrial civilizations and the law that, that extraterrestrial c- civilizations can't really be characterized by, by the type of energy that, that they use. That, that, that is, that there's a more fundamental, uh, more fundamental typology to them Mm -hmm. and going and looking at uh, I finally settled and realized that the most vital data here or the most vital insight is the way that extraterrestrial or intelligent civilizations Mm -hmm. uh, describe themselves Mm -hmm. and and what they say is they 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 describe themselves 
in terms of the dimension in which they're based. Mm -hmm. And by dimension, we mean a discrete energy, bounded energy range Mm -hmm. that relates to a number of criteria. We're in time and space, so the two sort of, uh, the four actual factors that we are time and the three dimensions of space, heights, mm-hmm. width, and depth. Um, and as you one goes to other dimensions, there are, are other criteria or definers of that dimension, which which we can't even imagine, you know, which may include light, love, and other factors. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so I, I realized then, and I developed uh, uh, the dimension-based typology of intelligent civilizations. Oh. And from that, there evolved the model, which I saw, which is that intelligent civilizations in the multiverse, live in a dimensional ecology, mm-hmm. and and they sort of uh, they sort of intersect in a dimensional e- ecology. For example, we have the intelligent civilization of souls, mm-hmm. and, which reside in a dimension that we can call the interlife, and they enter uh, through. Uh, interdimensional portals into, say, our third dimension of time space Uh or any other dimension in the exopolitical dimension of what we call the physical universe Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, then uh, incorporate themselves into fetuses uh, are for an incarnational experience in the extra-political or physical universe. Uh, And uh, that this this dimensional ecology model with interdimensional uh, portals and teleportation and all of these kind of discrete phenomena uh, suddenly made very transparent what uh, the uh, spiritual text and religious text and all of the belief systems have been talking about of heavens and hells and incarnations mm-hmm. and th- th- this, that. And that, that is that there are various dimensions and it's mm-hmm. a dimensional ecology. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and so that, that was a languaging or a model that then... Uh, I developed into the draft of a book called Dimensions, Ecology of the Multiverse, which is now uh, going into its second draft, and it'll it'll be, uh, it's one of the books that I'm working on now that'll be out over the next couple of years. But this article and this theory uh, feeds directly into that book and it 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 sounds like these two gentlemen have made some significant advances on the physics of the soul mm. uh and uh, uh d- since working on this book and and working this way it's given me a great appreciation and an ability to categorize and manage and think about and talk about the the information that has been traditionally thought to be part of our era, and that is the coming together or integration of spirituality and science. That is, mm-hmm. what traditionally has been in spirituality uh, uh, through texts or or mystery schools or ancient traditions uh, uh, and what has been on the scientific method of, you know, transparent laboratory protocols and 
and replicable results, mm. those two disciplines are now coming with outcomes and they're starting to integrate and come together. Mm. And this is one area, uh, uh, you know, by studying the intelligent civilizations of soul, of, of the soul from a science point of view, that I've been able to learn a great deal it, through the conceptualization and the writing of this book and the absorption of case data like the like the article that I just started reading at at the beginning of the of the program. Mhm. Mhm. <clears throat> well, how do you feel that that would um uh, uh uh integrate with what's going on here on this uh on this wacky planet? <laughs> Well, yeah, that that's a good question, and and part of the wackiness of 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 the planet, um, I think, is that is that we 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 have so many memes, so many yeah. com, com, competing memes, yeah. and uh, from an exopolitical uh, standpoint. If you look at the organized religions, for example, mm. uh, Judaism, uh, Christianity, uh, Islam, uh, and then you know some of the minor minor ones, Mormonism, you know, all, all, right. all, all those sort of things. There, there's a case to be made. And you know it requires one to go in depth in in each case that that these religions have all been seeded yeah by extraterrestrial interventions, some of which are quite mischievous <laughs> no and, kidding. <laughs> you know no and, kidding. Well, as and Gnostics uh, t- talked about many years ago, yeah, yeah, so that. So that uh, uh, <laughs> humanity has been pitted against each other, yes. uh, because there have been so many contradictory memes mm-hmm. set up, and and it's the it's the extraterrestrials disguising themselves as quote the divine in front yeah. of these these yeah. these you know superstitious. Primitive tribes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, and and all of a sudden we have the the conflict of civilizations of Islam versus yep. Christianity versus yep. Judaism, right. which is exploited and acerbated That's by right. the elite for for their purposes. Absolutely. Uh, so so uh, uh, in the long run. The solution to this is for science to provo- science and spirituality to come together and to provide a coherent, uh, replicable uh, 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 story right. of of the reality that that we're in, so that every school child and you know. Everyone from infancy gets sort of a user manual <laughs> as to, oh, this is your condition. <laughs> you are born as a human on planet Earth, and this is your condition as far as science knows it, and it's a multidimensional one, and you've incarnated here. And this this seems to be the case, you know, and right. and, and that's like, you know, part of your core curriculum at home and then in the in the schools, you know, and now to get to that to that level, uh, which is, and I'm sort of reading here from chapters. I mean, I'm not reading, but I'm paraphrasing chapters in my book. Okay. Uh, exopolitics, which is which is how I say this is how we can get beyond. Uh, all of the confusion that has been sown here by the exopolitical uh, 
interventions which have been you know quite quite uh um you know directed toward conflict yes uh, conflict uh, and uh, and yeah. enslavement perhaps. yes yes of the humanity and it and from what i can see it's uh we're, it's done a good job and it has been doing a good job probably for thousands and hundreds of thousands of years yeah yeah so uh, you're not looking at something that just just happened overnight right uh, this is something that has has been and is very cleverly engineered and it is uh designed and has multiple options in terms of where it will uh you know where it is going to uh dump us at the railroad station on the other side of the tracks yeah uh, and you mentioned civilization 1 and and uh even Gordon Duff uh who is the senior editor of uh, Veterans Today magazine is coming out and talking openly about that uh in uh on George Nury's show he said that uh he was told that civilization one exists uh and that there is a vast chasm between what is uh being the research and technology which is available and he went so far as to say that there were uh there were skirmishes already there were alien uh battles going on and uh a lot of the things that he said uh pertain to information that he pulled from Having viewed the documents that that people refer to as MK Ultra, and uh, one of the things that he talked about was uh, time travel and uh, you know uh, by location and the rest of it and the technology of uh, quantum physics. Um, apparently, they're looking at building a hadron collider uh, type of uh, facility that is twice the size. <clears throat> of the one that currently exists. So apparently uh, the god particle wasn't enough or the sm- they didn't get it big enough to get the smallest particle. So uh a consortium is building a larger collider in the near future. So that's something he uh, said openly. So <clears throat> um uh, there people are looking for these things and uh I think uh, you and I would be more inclined to uh, to uh, to the thought that what we are looking for is right under our nose, and it's probably even within us, and that the multidimensional world is here now, and that we can tap into it spiritually. Right. So, right. Yeah, and you know, and until <clears throat> until the stranglehold that is keeping uh, uh, control over all the institutions. And over the, the globe, and in every aspect, until that's released, and it doesn't look like it's going to be released easily, because the, those who have all the the power and the money and control are not going to let go of the technology and release it. Uh, I asked, uh, I asked if uh, uh, free energy was going to be coming out in the near future, and uh, you know, one of my sources said, no, uh, it's not. It's not going to be coming out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, wh- 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 whether we are headed is is a question that people have many different theories about. Mm-hmm. Whether we're headed toward a dystopia, a catastrophic future, <laughs> right. a positive future. Um, uh, but uh, just to examine some of the some of the hidden influences, I think mm-hmm. that that you were that that you're referring to, we have a number of hidden influences. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to call the, uh, the, the, um, the kind of governmental system that we're in, the exploitative Anunnaki Illuminati exploitative hierarchy, yeah. because yeah. it goes back at least 280,000 years. Yes. Yeah. And, and, uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to have been invited by Michael Tellinger to speak oh. at a conference in Johannesburg oh, nice. in November of 2011. Eleven. And right after that, we went. He he took us down to Adam's calendar, oh, which is nice. yeah, which is where the the Anunnaki 
initially landed, and they've dated it back to 200, 280,000 years ago. And there's a cal- there, there's a calendric site there, and it's all it's all it's all lined up to various planets and you know uh, uh, various galaxies and star systems, and and uh, it's set up with stone circles that go all the way to Zim Zim. Zimbabwe, ah. and uh, that that the Anunnaki had apparently set up a teleportation system by which they teleported the gold that had been mined mm-hmm. by the Homo sapiens that they had dumbed down from twelve strand DNA down to two strand d- d- mm-hmm. d- DNA, mm-hmm. and sort of marking us for wage slaves for the last two hundred eighty thousand years. Uh-huh. And so, and 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 teleporting the gold off of the planet, either to their planet directly or to ships, mm-hmm. and and um, so, and uh, then their rule has been transmitted down to the Egyptian pharaohs, and then down to the kings and queens, mm-hmm. and so nothing has changed on this planet for two hundred eighty thousand years because it's still all about the gold. And uh, there's a lot of evidence that the Anunnaki is still taking the gold off the planet. Right. Uh, and, and, and then there's a second layer uh, of ETs, and those are the, um, uh, uh, that's a more recent sort of uh, uh, predatory uh, invasion by the Draco reptilians and Orion Greys. Right, and and that's been highly documented. And then there are all sorts of stories about whether or not there is a liberation of the planet going on by the advanced human uh, galactic galactic governance councils, uh, mm-hmm. the Andromedans, mm-hmm. the uh, the the Milky Way galaxy, the Alpha Centaurians, and and Plydeans, and. and, and and others that are now mm-hmm. fighting back the reptilian and Orion Gray timeline takeover of this quadrant of the galaxy, including Mars and Earth, in in this um, solar system. Mm-hmm. Uh, that and that the quote New World Order is actually sort of the third the time space rollout of the uh of the um Orion Greys uh, mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. uh Draco reptilians and the and 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 the Greys. Uh so then there's then there's that then there's that level of of uh you know kind of takeover stuff mm-hmm. going mm-hmm. on. So so the issue is how we humans that are now uh, apparently under a dispensation because we do have positive intervention by advanced human extraterrestrial uh, galactic galactic governors councils. We can see their photos, um, photos of their ships uh, mm-hmm. around the uh, sun as they come in through mm-hmm. uh, portals there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and um, uh, you know there we we do have influences that are that are on our side. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the next uh, four to five years are going to be very interesting mm-hmm. because uh, it's it's a transition, and we aren't fully alone. We're 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 the target of multiple predators, our own elite, mm-hmm. uh, the unseen reptilians and dracos and Anunnaki, but also positive advanced human ETs mm-hmm. that apparently are intervening uh, on our side and they're, they're helping create a, a, a positive future. That's... That's kind of where the hope is coming from, uh, and and one can adduce, you know, positive evidence 
Oh, yeah, yeah. For that. Well, one, one of my guests uh, that you had on your show, uh, George Kavasilis, talked oh, sure. a lot about, you know, the, the various galactic groups and, and the ones that he's discovered uh, cannot be trusted, the more conservative ones, who have right. their own agenda and don't realize that they themselves have been grafted onto the original tree of life by the false uh, demigod uh, and the archons. So right. it, it gets... It gets all muddied up, and I, and then there's the ascension of Gaia Sophia, the planet, the planetary divine uh, being herself. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, when you throw that into the mix, uh, then you've got uh, all kinds of possibilities that are juicy, and and uh, you know, are we going into an organic uh, uh, evolution in, in into the future? Are we? Is this the in breath of God, as the Hindus uh, say, or? You know, is it a bit of all of it? Do we each maybe have our own, uh, are we all gods in our own universe, and we simply, you know, uh, uh, beam up to our own universe after this experience is over? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but there's a lot going on on this planet, and it certainly isn't all what, what it looks like it, it is. Uh, so so on, on, on balance, I, I, I tend to think, I, I I tend to look at things from a positive point of view, and yeah, that is yeah. that that looking at it, uh, things are a lot better than they were ten years ago, twenty years ago, thirty years ago, forty years ago, and and the oppression is a lot less, and and we have a lot of collective power, and the awakened uh, the awakened humanity is is is, um, uh, you know, there's a, a much larger critical mass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and the, the cosmic forces, you know, we're, we're, we're just at the right sort of position now because we know from studies that go back five, 500 years that, that, uh, at the time of the solar maximum, which we're going through now, 2012, 2013, 2014, oh, right, with, right. with all of the sun, sunspot cycles, well, that is a time at which there's extreme creativity, uh, at which there's a demand for social justice, for a great deal of positive social change, mm-hmm. uh, that large numbers of people are mobilized and are demanding social justice. Mm-hmm. So so now is the time really to be outspoken yes. and to really begin to demand these things because it's in the cosmic order. Uh, and uh, 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 even, uh, you know, even in the more kind of... Uh, uh, Areas where there's been extreme cover-up and the data is very sketchy, such as in the area of whether or not the sun has a has a twin star. Oh, right. And and uh, right. well, we know from a statistical standpoint that fifty uh, percent of the solar systems in the galaxy are uh, have twin stars. And <clears throat> that a solar system with a single star is the exception. Yeah. Um, and and so uh, there's data, uh, more and more data, to suggest that our sun may have a twin star, which may be a brown dwarf. Uh, and the data is uh, very uh, 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 hidden and very confusing, but... It is data that if one has been used to this type of research, there are patterns there that are very familiar. For example, many of the astronomers that have been studying this area uh, publicly have been murdered Uh. or have died under suspicious circumstances so that there's a huge government cover-up of the actual data as to whether... Uh, we do have a twin star, which is now approaching the inner the inner solar system, and which over the next what 
number of years may come into the inner solar system as close perhaps as 2.85 AU, which is one of the possibilities. That's about 180 million miles. And if that happens, there's so much attraction between the two suns Uh. that our sun becomes very active, lots of solar flares, lots of solar storms that in turn cause great turbulence on our Earth, on our planet, including a possible shift of the axis. Yes. Uh, and, and so these are the very real possibilities. The, the elite, and this is highly documented, uh, for, you know, have actually spent probably over three billion, billion, three trillion dollars, uh. uh, since, since the early 1970s and built over 170, uh, deep underground military bases. Yes. Uh, for their, uh, the political and economic elite, for the monarchs and the bloodline bankers, That's for right. the governments, uh, for the entire military, yep. for the police forces, for the hospital workers and doctors, yep. for the scientists, the ones who make bombs and GMO crops right. and all those great things, oh, yeah. and, and for, for all their technocrats. And the the plan is to leave their plan is to leave the rest of the population on the surface, and it's a great depopulation event. Yeah. This is how they get rid of the rest of the population, and then they can come out and have a great the planet as an elite theme park, oh, right? Uh, which right. is you know now That's right now. <laughs> However, and, 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 and yeah, Laura Eisenhower talks about that. She was asked to go to Mars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, now, yeah. now the yeah. irony is that Mars is more of a hazard than Earth because uh-huh. the because the the twin star comes right up to Mars's orbit, wow. and right now the scuttlebutt is that the teleporter between Earth and Mars is very busy, and they're evacuating all of the secret bases at Mars. Oh, really? I have yeah, not heard yeah, that. Yeah, wow, yeah. That's... That was a whistleblower on uh, Kerry Cassidy's show. Oh. Now, you know, who knows whether that's true or not, but well, that's right. just, the, you know, that's one of the latest <laughs> scuttlebutts going. Now, uh, as you know... Um, uh, Zany, I, I, um, or Lance, I, I, um, because you were there at, at the UFO con, I, I've advanced a thesis. Uh-huh. And this is what, how, how we have the thesis of the positive, both Planet X and Nemesis being true. Right. And a positive timeline. And yeah. that is because the dimensional ecology the advanced human ETs, the the consortium of Pleiadians and Alpha Centaurians and Syrians that in fact created and developed Homo sapiens as a 12-strand DNA light being in the third dimension and have been caretaking planet Earth for eons, uh-huh. they, you can go now, and and this is part of the photographs that I showed there, and, you, and you're the the listening audience can go to our website exopolitics.com and you'll see the article there and you can see the photographs of the planet-sized UFOs coming in through the triangular interdimensional portal on the sun and they're all doing all this kind of stuff to the sun they're zapping it with laser beams and doing all this stuff and and I posit that they're build, building a shield to shield the solar system and the planets from the effects of the of the flyby of the of the uh, twin star, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and concurrent with this as supportive evidence, in in earlier in 2012, the Mexican government released ancient Mayan artifacts. Mm-hmm which are also pictured on the website, which show, uh, and, and and it's amazing because these are thousands of years old, they show E.T. craft flying around the sun, coming out of triangular portals in the sun, 
and shielding the planets from a celestial object that is flying into the solar system and kind of, you know, shielding it from that that celestial object. So there's a precedent here. Mm. That is what the extraterrestrials have been doing. Mm. They've been protecting Earth at certain times. Mm-hmm. And and they're apparently not going to allow these scheming elites uh, to to carry out their 174 deep underground base depopulation of the planet, right. you know, just because they decided to keep a secret. Right, right. I'm with you on that one. <clears throat> you know. Yes, I am so, with you. Great. Yeah, so... So, uh, and, and so from that perspective, once this information starts to get out, I mean, you know, uh, here we are as public broadcasters yourself and, you know, uh, a community of public broadcasters, myself and all our community, this is what mm-hmm. we talk about That's right. day in and day out. Right. And this is going to start getting out more and more that, hey, you know, there's a planet out here. This is what the ETs are doing. There's uh, 174 deep underground military bases, which were uh, built with three, $3 trillion worth of money uh, by the Nixon administration forward, by the Bilderbergers, by the Rothschilds, by the uh, Queen, uh, by David Rockefeller, and uh, it was for them, and they were keeping the secret. And yeah. now, you know, so they're going to lose all respect. And, you know, so that... The, the, this is yeah. how how sort of a collective karma works. Now, I'm projecting that visit, that that that, that vision, yeah. and and yeah. there's one and there's one factor that 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 we haven't mentioned yet, okay. and this is kind of kind of the elephant in the room, the elephant in the living room. All right, and it's called the moon. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, the, the, because. There's a lot of evidence that the moon is an artificial satellite. Yes. And absolutely. it was pushed in there by our controllers. Yes. And that our yes. our mind control matrix is run from the moon. Moon. And, and and that that's why things never change and why we're yes. in this yes. in this reincarnation cycle that the yes. kind kind of the soul depot Yes. From the un- you know for an unconscious reincarnation is just on the other side of the moon, kind yeah. of on the far side of the moon. Absolutely. And, and so it's like until we get either the humans or some larger collective force to to move that moon out, uh, uh, you know we are. We are under a lunar matrix here yes, that is right. keeping humanity in prison, and that that's seems right. to be the case. Yes, I totally agree with you. And uh, there are things that back that up. George Kavasilis talks about this. David Icke talks about it. And in my early studies of Gurdjieff and Ospensky in the 70s, even George Gurdjieff said that souls cannot leave this uh, solar system. They go to the moon. And he said, "If you, we're born with the ability to complete ourselves, to reach full consciousness, but most people don't do it. And so the soul is not strong enough to leave the field, the magnetic field, within the moon, and they're literally drawn there and then regurgitated. They're put back in. Uh, I'm, a, I'm guessing that it's by some extraterrestrial race that manages the, uh, the re." Uh, incarnation of souls. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, there was uh, Stanley Kubrick uh, showed that black monolith on one of the planets. Well, uh, why couldn't that black monolith be on the other side of the moon uh, where the souls are collected and re- recycled or recontainerized, as the Greys like to say? You know, we know that the technology exists to remove the soul from the body and put it in a container. Uh, that's one of the premises of living eternally. The elite can pull their soul out and uh, put it in another container and, and go on and on and on. So um, these are all things that we can think about. And uh, personally, I would like to break out of the wheel of life and death 
uh, that has been spinning around here for so long, and nothing ever changes. And I think that's also uh, tied into the 32-degree thir- the tilt of the Earth. I think that was done intentionally, and I think it needs to. I think that will straighten up uh, somehow during the pole shift. And that uh, George they seems to think that the moon will be removed, that the artificial base which we look at as the moon will be removed, and that will completely alter the cycles of birth. Uh, women's uh, uh, cycles will change. They will no longer be a force to you know go through these horrible things that they go through with uh, giving birth. It could be a whole new world. You know, wow, when, when what a vision. Are, yeah, what a vision. When the controls are, are gone, we are magnificent beings of light and love, and we have the power of empathy and of caring and feeling for one another, and we have abilities, even with our little old two strands left. Uh, you know, we've been compressed down, stripped and naked, and dumbed down with chemtrails, fluoride, and the rest of it. And we're still more, uh, we're still magnificent, and we are still stronger and more beautiful than those who think they control us. What a beautiful vi- vision! So, so that is really a vision to 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 uh, hold, yeah. and 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 to to uh, you know to to begin to construct a statement mm. of the. The liberation, mm-hmm. you know that that would start by naming the moon, you know, yes. and by naming these things because they yes. they have been hidden for so long. Yes, and and but now, if we can, you know, as as we can name them mm-hmm. in a statement mm-hmm. and begin to talk about it, so that people don't think you're a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> No pun intended. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, she. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I wonder what the what the origin of that term is. <laughs> oh. That, well, I'll look it up. I'll Google it after. Yeah, so. yeah, but I mean, a lunatic that that is affected well, by the moon, right? Yes. Well, yes. There, there you go. The the the, the entire human race is affected by the yes. moon. <laughs> and and and, the, and mind control comes from there. Uh, George said that uh, as he was aware that the artificial intelligence operates from the moon and that the, uh, those who are running that particular station gave the military two of those devices to use on the planet for uh, planetary control. So mind control is an ever-pervasive and invisible event that uh, you know is going on all the time and uh, you know, the easiest way to to, uh, to to halt it is to remove the sources of it if you can. There's so much we can't remove, but we can do we can take back control over the information uh, that comes into our uh, into our being. And television is probably the least trustworthy of all of them. Right, right, and and uh, y- you know there there. There is information out there that just as, you know, in these coming years, 2013, 14, 15, 16, Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of people who say, oh, it's going to be so catastrophic. We'll have, we're going to have the economic breakdown. We're going to have the earth changes, all of that. But there is information that along with this comes the sweeping changes. Yes. And yes. comes positive intervention. Yeah. And absolutely. out of it, and I think that in the course of this hour, we've discussed the very sorts of things and sorts of barriers and kind of the infrastructure of control, starting mm-hmm. with the moon, going to the monarchies, mm-hmm. going to the banking systems, going mm-hmm. to the uh, the hidden grays and the. Il- it- mm hmm. Illuminati and the and the and and the reptilian bases, mm-hmm. you know, all of these things that 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 are that are obstacles that that can be cleared. Yes, and and so that there is a way, and and these statements have been made because uh, you know, for example, um, uh, the 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 
Council of Eight, which was uh, uh, a galactic, a reported galactic governance council mm. that appeared over New York City on October uh, in October uh, 2010, I think, mm. uh, October 13th, and and uh, uh, that had been predicted uh, by uh, NORAD. Uh, lifelong NORAD officer Stanley Fulham in 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 uh, in his book, uh, and and uh, I was able to interview him, and I did a number of articles. And there's a whole period that says, look, in, from 2013 to 14 to 15, there are going to be a lot of earth changes, but and there's going to be the downfall of the old system. And out of this is going to become much more egalitarian, sharing, community-based system, and and the positive ETs are going to come to the fore. Yes. And yes. and so that we come out of this period with a lot of those of those issues solved. Let's hope and let's envision that the moon gets taken out. Yes. Yes. I'm aligned with you on that one. <laughs> and you know. the Earth. And the Gaia Sophia sits up, takes notice, and corrects yep. her spin. So we don't have this 26,500-year cycle where we go through all the signs of the, of the uh, planets. That's not necessary. Let's do something new. Let's break out of the old mold and do yeah. something that isn't cycle after cycle after cycle that just keeps going over and over. I believe that's a controlled uh, and contrived event to keep consciousness in matter. It's enslaved in matter. And it has no freedom that way. It doesn't have as much freedom. So uh, I'm totally aligned with you on that. Oh, excellent. We, we started it today. The moon goes. Excellent. <laughs> the moon goes. Great. That's it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <Good> moon, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alfred, our hour has flown by on Boy. Angel Wings. So um, if you could just mention your site uh, before we sure, go. I just sure. want to thank you so much for being on the show because I just love talking to you and I love the Oh, great. Doing. Great. Yeah. It's 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 very easy. People can go to exopolitics.com. Easy. And is, there's a wealth of material there to investigate. And uh, I, I was having so much fun doing that today. So uh, thank you again. We'll uh, be in touch. And uh, uh, enjoy the solar uh, eclipse that's coming. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thanks again, Alfred. Certainly. All right. Good night, everybody. An article that's uh, really kind of caught my eye okay. because it's it's part of a book that I'm that I'm gotten through a first draft of called Dimensions: The Ecology of the Multiverse. Ooh. And and the 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 headline of this article says. Near death experiences occur when soul leaves nervous system. And then it goes on. A near death experience occurs when quantum substances, which form the soul, leave the nervous system and enter the universe at large. According to a groundbreaking theory proposed by two eminent scientists. Wow. According to this idea, consciousness is a program for a quantum computer in the brain, which can persist in the universe even after death, explaining the perception of those who have near-death experiences. Dr. Stuart Hameroff, Professor Emeritus for the Department of Anesthesia. Or getting a signed copy, write me directly at zanymystic59 at yahoo.com. Thank you. Tonight... My guest is Alfred Lambermont Weber. Alfred is a futurist whose book, Exopolitics, Politics, Government, and the Law in, Uni Law in the Universe, founded the science of intelligent civilizations in the multiverse and expresses a positive timeline for Earth. <clears throat> Alfred's 1974 book, The Age of Cataclysm, integrates Earth sciences and the psychic remote viewing of Edgar Cayce of a global coastal event and expresses the cat catastrophic timeline for Earth. He is also the chairman of the Mars Anomaly Research Society, educating about life on Mars. 
a graduate of Yale University, Yale Law School, and a Fulbright, Fulbright Scholar. Alfred has taught economics at Yale University and constitutional law at the University of Texas. He was general counsel to the New York City Environmental Protection Administration, a futurist at Stanford Research Institute, and is a judge on the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal. I just caught up with Alfred at the recent UFO conference in Santa Clara, so let's welcome him to the show now. Hi, Alfred. How are you? Great, great. You know, really uh, just just fine, thank you. <laughs> Good. Good. Well, you do so much wonderful work in uh, uh, contacting people who have information that is not at all uh, readily available to the public. Uh, it's not available on the uh, mainstream, underground, or even within the New Age groups. You really kind of stand as an island in that sense uh, with exopolitics and the, the interviews that you do on the radio. Um, oh, th- go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I was thinking since we're so close <clears throat> to the end of 2012 and we have elections here in the United States, I thought I'd, uh, first of all, check with you to see what you feel is the most important topic that we should be aware of from all the research that you do and the people that you talk to uh, on your show. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that, what, what, what that's really, a tall order. You, I, you, I know. you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's funny because I, I've been uh, uh, speaking over the last uh, 24 to 48 hours, as you can imagine, about the, the impacts of uh, what a Appears to be a an, envir- an environmental war, harp created um, false flag uh, attack, namely Hurricane Sandy, mm-hmm. and what its impact on the 2012 e- elections uh. would 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 be. So I I, I say, well, what is um, um, what, what's a good topic to speak about with Zany Mystic on a fireside chat? <laughs> and and I'm here looking at a. An- you are tuned into a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out, and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Greetings, and welcome to a Fireside Chat. I'm your host, Lance White. Before I introduce tonight's guest, I am asking for your financial support to keep my show on the air until 2013. My book, Tales of a Zany Mystic, is now available for purchase in paperback or on Kindle at Amazon Books. You can make a donation in any amount or sponsor one week's show for $50. If you're a regular listener who uses Kindle, please support my work by purchasing Tales of a Zany Mystic for $2.99 at Amazon Books. To find out more about donations, sponsorship,